Introducing... The Daredevils of Hollywood. All right, everybody. I want you to realize that this is supposed to be a war. A terrible war. So make it look that way. Are you about ready for my scene, Mr. Gilmore? Yes, we'll be ready in a couple shakes, Dick. Now, here's what I want you to do. We're going to blow up that building with a cork bomb. A shell is supposed to hit it. I see. But you'll really pull it down with piano wires, won't you? That's right. But the explosion will look real. Now, there'll be rocks, bricks, and everything else falling. I, I get it. I get it. And, and where am I supposed to be? You're doubling the leading man, standing in the doorway. Now, when the explosion starts, you begin to run. But you fall, and all these bricks and rocks land on top of you. Now, you get the idea? Yes, sir. Everything's ready to shoot, Mr. Gilmore. All right, let's go. Set your extras, Charlie. Places! Take your places! Quiet! Now we'll do it just as we rehearse. Hey, special effects, you all set for those bombs? All set, Gilmore. All right, the take. Roll them. Action! From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes, those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions, whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death, those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth, the Suicide Squad, the movie Stuntmen, the Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in bringing you this copyrighted radio feature, we are again privileged to have as our guest one of the top-notch stuntmen of Hollywood, Frank McGrath. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are his own actual experiences, and Frank McGrath is here in the studio right now. Later on in the program, we will, of course, bring him to the microphone, but first, let us learn something of the hazardous work which is his everyday occupation. The scene is a huge soundstage on the 20th Century Fox lot. It is early morning. A gigantic set has been built on the stage, a prison set. By means of Hollywood magic, a large tank of water surrounded by scenery and trees looks for the world like a medieval prison circled by a moat. High above, supported by large timbers, are three vats, each containing 25,000 gallons of water. A very difficult and dangerous scene is about to be made for the picture... The Prisoner of Shark Island. And Warner Baxter, the star, has turned over this assignment to his stuntman, Frank McGrath, who sits talking with the director. Frank, we've got those tanks rigged up so we can dump them slowly. I don't think we'll have any trouble. Yeah, well, see, they tip over slowly and spill the water gradually. Personally, I think we ought to dump the whole works at once. It'll make a swell shot. Well, that's a lot of water, Mr. Ford. Yes, I know it is. 75,000 gallons. Uh, what I'd like to do now is get this routine straight. I'm supposed to be shot off that high wall and fall into the moat, huh? Yes. At least the prison guards think you're shot, but you're not. Then I swim out across the moat and through the culprit, which is supposed to open into the ocean. That's right, Frank. That's when we dump the water. It's supposed to look like uh, big waves rolling in. Makes a pretty rough ocean, eh? That's it. It's okay with me, but I still don't like the idea of spilling all that water at once. Uh, we'll see, Frank. Anyway, we'll have a man there by the culprit to stand by if anything goes haywire. He's over there now. Hey, Duke! Come over here a minute. Duke knows his water stuff all right, I'll tell you that. Oh, hi, Duke. Hello, Frank. How are you, Mr. Ford? Hey, Duke, what's your idea on pulling Frank out of a mess if he gets in one? My suggestion is to tie a line on him, Mr. Ford. After all, if the water gets too tough for him, it'd be too tough for me, too. I see what you mean, Duke. Uh, you can hold on to the line and stand out of the way. That, that'll give you a footing. That's the idea. That's good. Then we can dump all the water at once. That's a lot of water, Mr. Ford. <laughs> Those are my exact words, Duke. If you're ready, Mr. Ford, we're all set. All right, Johnny. Let's take it, boys. Up on the wall, Frank. All right. Here, hold still a minute, Frank. Let me tie you off. All right, everybody. This is it. On your toes now. And stay out of the way of that water. This is the picture. Quiet, quiet, please. Hey, Griff. Tell him to cut the ropes on the tanks when I give the signal. You're not going to dump it easy, then. No, let it all go at once. How about it, Frank? Are you all set? All ready, Mr. Ford. Okay. Here we go. Turn them over. Action. There he goes into the water. Nice ball. Yes, and it's a good shot so far. He's swimming for the culvert. He's going through. All right, men. Jump the water. Cut the rope. Look at that. Look out, the whole set's 
watching. Hold on, that line, you. That's Keep watching, all right. Put him up there. Hurry up, John. Put him up. Hurry up. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the courageous young man who made that scene, whose job it is to make just such scenes for motion pictures. Frank McGrath, interviewed by Hal Siles. Well, Frank, that was certainly a shower bath, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll say it was. The weight of that water ran into tons. Were you hurt? Mm, no, not seriously. Of course, it knocked me unconscious. I would have drowned if I hadn't had that rope around me. Well, I gather the flood of water washed the entire set away. Yeah, that's right. Of course, you had to do the scene over again. Yes, we did it again, but they didn't dump the water so fast this time, and everything went off okay. Say, Frank, you have a contract with 20th Century Fox, haven't you? That's right. Uh -huh. And do you work every day? No, not every day. I, You see, I, I double for Warner Baxter, and I only work when he works. I see. Well, now, Frank, to just what do you attribute your success as a doubling stuntman? Well, lucky breaks have had a lot to do with it. And then, too, I take my work seriously. I like my job, and I do my best every time. And uh, who did you double for when you first started in pictures? At first, I doubled for anybody who would let me. Then I met Buster Collier, Jr., and I worked for him about seven years. And how long have you been with Warner Baxter? Mm, seven years. Seven seems to be your number. <laughs> That's right. Now, look, Frank, do you do all kinds of stunts? No, I don't do many stunts anymore. That, that is not as many as I used to. It isn't necessary. It's only seldom that stunts come up in Baxter's pictures. But you used to do them all the time, didn't you? That's right. Uh, I've done a lot of horse stunts for westerns. You know, falls, jumps off cliffs, and things like that. Say, years ago, I did a horse gag for a picture called The Killer with George O'Brien. Uh, Dave Howard was the director, and it was on location. Oh, uh, just a minute, Frank, if you don't mind. Suppose we hear about that horse stunt. And uh, first, uh, I think it's time for our sponsor. All right, Frank. Now, what about that horse stunt? Well, it was on location down at Chatsworth. Uh, I was to be tied on the back of a horse, and the horse was to run away. And <laughs> believe me, that horse could run. Uh, Cliff Lyons, another stunt man, was to ride his horse up alongside and overtake me, but it seemed that Cliff's horse couldn't run quite fast enough. And we were all ribbing him about it. That makes five times we tried it, Cliff. Do you think there's any chance of getting home tonight? They're probably stuck here for a few days, Mr. Howard. Maybe in a week, maybe ten days, and Cliff will make the run. <laughs> uh, maybe you could give me a slower horse. Or else give me a faster one. Say, that might be an idea at that. Hey, Mac, bring over a faster horse for Cliff. Now, these cameras are getting pretty cold, Cliff. We don't want them to freeze up on us. Yeah, I'm getting kind of worn out being tied to this man all day. Hey, let's really try to get this out this time. How's this one, Mr. Howard? Ah, that's he'll do. Now, get on him, Cliff, and let's try it again. Horse. Now, all you have to do is catch up with Frank and stop his horse. Oh, this scene ought to be a cinch. You all set, Mr. Howard? Yeah, let's take it. Okay. Everybody, we'll try it again. The take, quiet. All right now, boys, do your stuff. Make it look good. Okay. Emma. Say, he just can't catch Frank. Oh, oh that's no good. They're too far out of the scene now anyway. Hot. Oh, it's got me stumped. I don't know what to do. Frankly, neither do I, unless, um, unless we change horses. Say, that might work. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Come here, fellas, listen. We got another idea. How about changing horses? Okay with me. Anything to get this shot to go off. All right, let's make the switch and try it again. Well, we'll have to get the shot pretty soon. The sun's beginning to take a dive. Well, I bet you knew how to get it this time. I'm just sore enough to do it. Well, are you all set? Yep. Yep, let's go. Here we go. This is it. This is the picture. Quiet, please, quiet. Turn him over. Now, go ahead, boys. Come on. Looks like he's going to make it this time. He's gaining on Frank. Oh, but he can't quite make it. Just a little faster, Cliff. You've almost got him. Say, those horses are really running. Holy snake, look. Cliff's standing up in the saddle and going to jump. Look at that guy. He's leaning over. There he goes. See, the grass horse is falling. What a spill. Hey, come on. Come on. Well, Frank, that certainly must have been quite a fall. <laughs> quite a fall is right. I broke five ribs and was laid up two weeks. Now, how did that accident happen? That is, what caused it? Cliff was so anxious to make the scene that last time that he made a dive for my horse. You know, a flying tackle. Of course, he didn't intend to trip him up. I suppose a lot of unusual things happen in the picture business, don't they? Yes, there's always something coming up that you don't expect. Uh, getting back to Warner Baxter, Frank, uh, in this new contract you have, uh, uh, will you be doing the same work that you've done for seven years? That's right. Stand in, double, and doing stunts. Well, I can easily see the advantage to the star for having a double, but... 
What about the studio? Where do they come in? Oh, it saves a lot of time and expense for the studio. And uh, how is that? Well, for instance, uh, maybe Mr. Baxter will be working on the sound stage, doing close shots all day. Perhaps at the same time, I'll be working in long shots on the exterior set. And the finished picture shows it all as Baxter. That's it, exactly. I can easily see that it pays the studio to have a chap like you under contract. And what little time I've spent out there in the lot, I've found that you're very well liked by everyone. Well, thank you. Now, one more question, Frank. I see that our time is getting short. Uh, just what are your plans for the future? Well, truthfully, I have no plans. I never make them. Everything that has happened to me has just happened. If you know what I mean. My theory is if you don't make plans, you'll never be disappointed. That's uh, very good logic, too, and that certainly is one way to look at it. Well, Frank, I hope you'll never have occasion to be dis disappointed. Thanks very much for coming here, and on behalf of our listeners, may I express appreciation for your story. I know that everyone joins me in hoping that we may have you again on this program very soon. Thanks, old boy, and good luck. <laughs>